He was such a remarkable man, he really was. And um, I mean, anybody who lived in the, my generation, who lived through the 1940s, I mean, he's the great hero, and nobody say anything against him. At a sprightly 95, Lord Carrington is the last person still alive who served in a Churchill government. He's held cabinet positions under many Conservative leaders since, but he'll never forget the unexpected call from Churchill in 1951. I was at home out shooting partridges, and a man came up on a bicycle, and he said to me, um, uh, the Prime Minister wishes to speak to you on the telephone. So I rang up the number, and there was the Prime Minister, and he said to me, you've been shooting partridges, and I said, yes, I have. He said, would you like to join my shoot? <laughs> and so I did, in this very humble capacity. Were you surprised to be asked? I'm astonished. <laughs> what memories do you have of working with him? I, f I found him actually rather a terrifying figure, but that was because of his reputation rather than him, I think. I think. The British people had rejected Winston Churchill in 1945 when Labour swept to power, but he was back six years later with Peter Carrington in his junior role. He was a very old man when he came back. Too old to be the Prime Minister, perhaps? Well, he, he still had qualities, I mean, remarkable qualities, but he didn't have the the sort of qualities that he had in the, you know, in the wartime quality. I mean, he was a very old man. After all, he had several strokes and so on, which uh, nobody knew about. And the country, believe it or not, was run by Christopher Soames. Sorry, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he, he, he was he being a son-in-law. Um, he, he knew he was very close to Churchill, and, and so he had an awful lot to do with disguising the fact that Churchill had a so could quite a lot of, uh, of decisions he took. I think he did it rather well. <laughs> but did you know this at the time? No. Well, I knew he was ill, but I didn't know it to that extent. Now starts the slow journey to St Paul's. Winston Churchill died 10 years after leaving office on the 24th of January 1965 and 50 years ago tomorrow was buried in state. Revered as a hero for decades, there's been some revisionism recently, suggestions that Churchill was a chancer and egotist who wouldn't have succeeded in today's political world. Well, there's some truth in that. I mean, you know, he... Um, uh, he wasn't always right, he, he did some fairly disastrous things, but he rose above all that because what he did during the war was the thing that really mattered in this country and he was dominant and marvellous and brave and he spoke and his speeches were so good. We shall fight in France, we shall fight on the seas and oceans. Well, I think the qualities are more useful in war that he had rather than in peacetime. We shall fight in the field. In 1940, when um, everybody was falling to bits, there he, there he was, either dressed as a, a Commodore or, <laughs> or in a boiler suit or in a bowler hat or something. I mean, he was a sort of one-off. He, he was the right man at the right time, and we were very lucky he was there. Do you think we'll ever see his like again? You don't get the opportunity for a figure like Churchill, unless there is some sort of catastrophe. And I think that uh, he, above all, were, was the sort of symbol uh, of Britain in the war years. Now Peter Carrington is a political veteran, but the last survivor of Churchill's administration is happy for his own voice to remain in history. I, I think that um, it's a great mistake when you're quite old to pretend that you're not and to go along and bore people with your speeches. I think you've done your bit and shut up. <laughs> what are your plans for the next decade? My plans? Stay alive, I think, would be quite good. <laughs>